This is the day that the Lord has made. We are rejoicing and we are glad in this day. Amen. So grateful for the Lord uh, allowing us to come back together again on this wonderful Tuesday evening. And um, I know that you've had a wonderful time in some of your other classes. And we're just excited about what God is going to say to us in the continuation of the tools of word study on tonight. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, your grace and your love. Your power is awesome. Oh, God, your healing power. We ask, God, in the name of Jesus, for those that are, might be sick. Some, are, oh, Lord, have, have emailed and said that they were either in the hospital, coming out of the hospital, doing having different difficulties um, in, their, in their lives. And, God, we're praying in the name of Jesus. Lord, you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, and by your stripes we are healed tonight. God, we pray your healing virtue. God, flow to them right where they are in Jesus' mighty name. Now, Lord, not only anoint us to teach, but anoint us to hear and to learn. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. God bless you. Let's go pick up where we left off on the last time. Amen. We were talking about the tools of word study, the tools of word study. It, it's, it's hard to try to figure when you're just reading the Bible by itself uh, and you don't know where to find things or how to find things. It can get a little bit uh, difficult and sometimes it can get a little bit aggravating. Why? Because uh, you just don't know where to look. And so, but this is what this lesson is last week and this week is about, is just kind of going over some of the tools that are right, uh, readily available to you so that you can figure out what the scripture is saying. Of course, our key scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 1 through 23. And I hope you're continuing to read that. I want you to continue to read that chapter, continue to read those, those verses over and over and over and over again. Now, why am I saying read it over and over and over again? So you get it in your spirit. Amen. So you begin to ask questions because what's going to happen after about five time or, or uh, time number five or time number eight, you're going to be going, you're going to be saying, hmm, what does this really mean? And we're going to continue to break it down so that you will have a better understanding of what the scripture is saying to the church and to us as individuals. Some of you are ministers, some of you are preachers, some of you are evangelists, some of you are probably bishops, apostles, all of that, all, all of those titles. I don't know quite what all of your titles are, but whatever your title is, and if you are in ministry, it's imperative to understand that God is depending on you to dive into his word to pull out the right now truths. I like to call it the punctiliar truths. The word punctilious means right now, um, the, the right this moment, the, the truths that are necessary for wherever you are ministering, whatever you're reading in your Bible study, those types of things. Now, last week we talked about all, uh, the dictionaries. We talked about commentaries. We talked about Bibles, the different types of Bibles. We talked about maps and how to use maps. Y'all remember all of that? Shaking of heads. Y'all remember all of that? Hey, okay. All, all right. Y'all y'all going to be a tough group tonight. Okay. <laughs> too much barbecue yesterday. Was that what it was? Too many, too many hamburgers and hot dogs. All right. Well, that should have digested by now. Here we go. <laughs> um, we also talked about biblical encyclopedias. And, but tonight we're going to talk about concordances. A concordance, I remember when I first got saved in 1974, when I first got saved, I was only 14, no, 75. I was only 14 years old. Amen. And the, the gentleman that discipled me, the young man that discipled me, one of the first things he taught me how to do was to use a concordance. And of course, the Bible, I keep saying I'm going to pull out my Bible. It's right over there. Amen. It's still got the duct tape. My very first Bible still got the duct tape. It don't want to handle it too much. It might fall apart. The pages are just highlighted. That was back when they had the color pencils. Anybody remember color pencils? 
That was before uh, highlighters. Oh, you don't know nothing about them color films. You too young. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that was before highlighters. And I discovered after after reading and reading and reading the Bible and highlighting different passages that if if I don't if I keep highlighting, I'm going to highlight the whole book. So that's kind of when that kind of went to by 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 the wayside. But anyway, but in the back of that little Bible is a so yeah. Um, I think it's a um, Nelson Nelson Bible, I believe. Anyway, um, it had a, a concordance. wasn't a very big concordance, but it had one. And any time he told me, any time you're 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 want to find a scripture, all you have to do is go back into the back of the Bible, um, look up the word that you look up a word, any word that's in that passage of scripture. And more than likely, you're going to find it uh, back there, and it's going to give you, it's going to show you everywhere that scripture or that word is used in the Bible. And so, and more than likely, you're going to find the, the passage of scripture that you're looking for. And so, concordances are very, very important. Um, but one of the concordances I want to introduce you to, if you and I know most of you probably already know this, but but I'm the teacher, so here we go, um, is the Strong's concordance. The Strong's concordance is uh, if you get if you get a actual Strong's concordance, it's about three to four inches thick. Um, it's a big book. It's a heavy book, and almost and just I believe every word that you can think of is, is, is this, if it's a part of the Bible, uh, it's in that book. And it's going to show you everywhere that passage of scripture or that word that you're looking for is seen in the entire Bible. Of course, most of the time it will start with the Old Testament. And then in order, it will march you right up to the um, New Testament. And so therefore you can look up any word and you can find uh, find out exactly where that passage is found. Now, there's something called uh, Strong's uh, Numbers. In some of, I have a Greek, he, Greek and he, or Hebrew and Greek study. Whoa. Okay, I almost had an avalanche, I'm sorry. In my um, Greek or Hebrew and Greek study Bible, this is what you call a key study Bible. It's a nice tool to have. I bought this many, many years ago. And what it does is, is of course, it's the, it's the King James Version of the Bible, but you're reading a passage of Scripture, and what once you find the Scripture that you're going to read, uh, the Scripture will have certain words underlined, and besides some of the words that are underlined, it will have a number. Take, for instance, I'm looking at the word, and I'm in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm looking at verse 18. And it says for the preaching and the word preaching is underlined and then it has the the number uh, 3056. And in this particular Bible, you can actually go to the back uh, to what they call the lexicon. Um, and you can look up that num you can look up that number and it will give you an explanation as to what the preaching is, uh, of what that word is. Um, if it's an and and I'll get into I will get into some of this a little bit later. Um, so this is a very nice tool, and it's kind of all in one, all uh, kind of all yeah all in one type of book. And you would probably enjoy it. I, I know I've enjoyed mine down through the years. But let's go into um, with saying talking about Greek uh, excuse me Strong's concordance and Strong's numbers. Let's go into uh, what we call online sites. How many of y'all like to shop online or like to look up things online? You like the internet, those types of things. How many of you already have a, just by showing of hands, how many of you already have a, a Bible program um, all that you go to? It's like your go-to. That's when you're looking up something and if you want to look up, um, if you want to find out what, the com look up more than one commentary. You can go to those those different sites. Some of them, I'm just going to name just a few. Um, the, the very first one that I ever downloaded uh, was what's called eSword. 
not E-Sword, but E-Sword. <laughs> Amen. Um, E-Sword was a free, as I know it was way back some several years ago, was a free um, Bible program that you could download and just add it to add it to your computer. Uh, I'm sure they've it's, it's turned into an app now. Uh, and at one time it was absolutely free and they would just ask you to send in a donation to help, you know, defray the cost of, you know, internet, those types of things. And it's always a good, anytime somebody's giving you something free and they ask for a donation, it's always a good thing to give a donation. Why? Because it's helping you. Amen. But with eSword, you can, you can, it has, most of the time it starts out with just maybe two Bibles, but you can add as many Bibles as you want. And it'll have a list of other Bibles that you can add. Um, oh, all kinds, easy read Bible, uh, God's word version, um, King James version, modern King James version, new modern King James, version, uh, on and on and on and on. And you can add those Bibles for absolutely free. But some of them that you go to uh, download, you will have to pay for. And of course, they will show you how to pay for those. And uh, and, and uh, of course, I am, I'm, I think I said this last week, I encourage all students, I encourage all in anybody that's studying the word of God, invest in your library, invest in, I'll say it again, invest in your library. Amen. It's never money wasted. Invest in your library, buy books, buy, um, it, of course, sometimes when you do the online sites and some of them, um, require the internet. Some of them don't. I know you can download um, um, eSword and you, you can take it anywhere and you don't have to worry about having uh, Wi-Fi. You don't have to worry about uh, being hooked up to the internet or anything like that. Another one is um, Bible Gateway. Bible Gateway is a, it's a nice program. But the one that I want to, uh, one of my favorite and my go-to most of the time is called Blue Letter Bible, Blue mm -hmm. Letter Bible. And I know some of you have probably already know about Blue Letter Bible. It is an awesome, awesome, awesome um, uh, site that you can go to and you can just type in whatever, let's say you want to uh, learn something about um, the crucifixion of Christ. And uh, you, you just type in the word uh, or a word that is in the Bible. Let's see, they crucified my Lord. You can just type, type in, um, he was crucified. And then it will pop up everywhere uh, that message is, or th those words are, it'll show you everywhere it is. But the beautiful thing about Blue Letter Bibles, matter of fact, I was on it just today because Chancellor um, Michael Brown, he, we were talking um, earlier this week, and he told me, he shared something that he had preached on Sunday. And, 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 and just for, some, what, what, for whatever reason, I know it was the Holy Spirit. Uh, I got to work today, and of course, I didn't look, up, look it up yesterday, but I got to work today, and, and the, the message that he was preaching about, or the scripture that he shared with me, it just kept bugging me. It just kept. I said, I've got to go take a few moments and just look this up. And uh, of course, the scripture I'll share with the share, share. Share. I can't talk tonight. I'll share the scripture with you. Is Romans chapter fifteen and verse twenty-nine. Uh, Romans chapter fifteen and verse twenty-nine. And you'll see the words. Is is the apostle Paul? He was talking to the church at Rome, um, and he was saying, "I'm going to come to you." But I, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to try to go to Spain first. But but on my way to Spain, I'm going to try to figure out a way that I can get to you. But when I come, I am you, you need to understand I'm coming in the fullness and I'm coming in the fullness of the blessing and then of the gospel. So fullness, blessing and gospel were working my last nerve on today. And so as I, I took a few moments to sit down and I went to Blue Letter Bible and uh, I, I just typed in the scripture because I knew it. But if I didn't know the scripture, I could type in 
uh, fullness. I could type in or fullness of the blessing or whatever. Type in part of it in the search bar. And then, of course, uh, and look until I find the actual text or the actual uh, passage that I was looking for. So today, and this is a, a fresh experience for, for me just today. And so I typed in and I found the scripture. And when I looked at it, I kept reading it over and over again. Then I went, and I know if you go to Bibles up under uh, Blue Letter Bible, you're liable to find, I think it's about 35 different Bibles. Some of them are Korean in different languages, um, Chinese or whatever, uh, and different different types of Bibles. And so I read it in a couple of different versions. And after doing that, I was like, I, I was, just wasn't satisfied. I said, there's got to be more. Let me tell you something, uh, um, people of God. There ought to always be something in you that says there's got to be more. There's got to be more. Don't stop until you satisfy all of the questions. Amen. Don't preach it until you satisfied all the questions. Don't teach it until you satisfied all the questions. Don't settle until all of your questions are answered. Because in the search, you're going, oh, God is going to speak to you. God is going to deal with you. Oh, bless his holy name. And I and, and I know that because he does me that way all the time. And so on today, uh, on today, I decided that I would look over where the scripture is listed. Over to the left is something called tools. And under tools is commentaries, dictionaries, all of these different things that you that are right there at your disposal, that you can just use those things. But as soon as you click on tools, it's going to trans, it's going to change that whole screen into, and it's going to give you the scripture in Greek because the Old Testament is written in Hebrew. And the New Testament is written in Greek. And because I was in the New Testament, uh, all these Greek words, which do I read Greek? No, it's Greek to me. But anyway, but the good thing about it is uh, once you look and it breaks down every word, every word, uh, and sometimes it'll, it'll, it'll connect phrases together. And so as I began to look it up uh, and I looked it up in the Greek, and I noticed that the word fullness, not only um, does it mean to the full, but it also alluded to um, like a ship that has the that has the sailors, but it also had, and of course, it's an old fashioned ship that has the rowers, you know, where you row, row, row your boat, that type of thing. And it has the rowers, it has the, um, the sailors, it has, and it was a, another person, but all of these, all these different people on the one ship are guaranteed to get the ship from where it is to where it needs to be. And so therefore the fullness of success is, and this is what I got from the text, the fullness, I'm, Paul is saying, I'm coming to you with the fullness of success. Lord have mercy. In other words, I can't miss so by the time I get to you, I'm going to give you everything I need. And I'm just going to stop right there before I get happy all over again. Uh, needless to say, I uh, text uh, uh, Chancellor uh, Brown and, and in all caps. You know when you when you text somebody in all caps, you know you're either mad or you or you're excited or something. And I and I called him by his whole name. And I said, I am about to go crazy reading this text. But anyway, um, but it was good. And so the Blue Letter Bible will do all of that for you. And another beautiful thing, if you don't speak uh, Greek or Hebrew, you remember earlier I was talking about how you got to have your heart down, Pat. <laughs> and, and I kept saying, I kept talking about um, as I was reading the scripture and I would pronounce some of those words. And I said, wrong pronunciation. Y'all remember me saying wrong pronunciation? And the reason I kept saying that is because it also gives you, Blue Letter Bible also gives you, you'll see a little speaker, a little speaker icon. You click on that and it will pronounce the Greek word for you. And if, of course, if you click, as long as you 
click it, it's going to say it over and over and over again so that when you get to where you're going, you can throw your head back and say, whatever, you can just spit it out and, and, out and sound like you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, and you do. Why? Because you have studied to show yourself approved of God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's just some of just a few of the things that Blue Letter Bible will do. Now, y'all can tell that's one of my favorite. Some, uh, there's other, um, there are other Bible apps that you can download. There are other electronic um, versions of, of Bible programs that you can get. Some are inexpensive. Some are, some might cost you just a few dollars. Some might cost you $30, $40. Some can go over $1,000. I have seen some that were over $1,000. And, and I mean, and up, 1000 and up. But you you best know that when you when you go to any of those sites, if you decide to spend that kind of money, you're going to have a whole wealth of information at your disposal. Amen. So we are, we are, we've just finished talking about online sites. Now, books, you need to be able to use different types of books. And of course, I showed you one, the Greek, the, excuse me, the Hebrew Greek key study Bible. Another one that I like to pull out every now and then is, especially when I'm dealing with theological terms, is the uh, Westminster Dictionary of Theological Terms. Westmin Westminster Dictionary of Theological Terms. I'll hold it there for just a second. It's not a very thick book, but it's a very unique book. Let's say you go somewhere and um, you're in a service or you're somewhere and somebody says at this time we're going to partake of the Eucharist. And you're, you're, you're going the what? You know, because some people, they love to throw around theological terms. And, and that's, this is a good way to help you understand what they're saying. And I, I guarantee you, you look up the word Eucharist in this book, it's going to tell you it is communion or it is the Lord's Supper or the Last Supper, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be this, it's going to talk about the sacraments. Um, amen. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had break it, said that, you know, so forth and so on. And, and so basically that's what that is. Uh, and there, there are so, so many other books that you can use. There is another book. Oh, I'm sorry. I put it away. Uh, excuse me. Now, this is one. It's called the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. I'll hold it there for a second. It's a pretty thick book. Now, what this does, the word metaphysics just simply means beyond the physical. Beyond the physical. Beyond the physical. Now, this book is one that you need to be a little careful with because it can get a little heavy. And, and, the, and what, I, what I mean by that, it'll give you the definition of the word, and then it will give you the metaphysical meaning of the word. Uh, but then it sometimes it, it, it talks about things like um, different thoughts and different things of like things like that. But, you know, with, with anything, you have to eat the meat and spit out the bones. Amen. So, but it's a very good book. And in this scripture that we have given you to look at, it's going to be this, this, this a book like this would be very beneficial to you because it's going to explain Bozaz and, and Sina. Amen. And going to give you a little bit more information on that. Uh, I, I'm I'm so excited uh, about uh, we're, when we're uh, when we are going to begin to really dive into this text and really break it down. But these are some of the tools that you can use, and and of course there are many others that you can use. Also, 
um, in terms of tools, consider the writings of past and pre present theologians. If you look up, um, if you look up the word theologians uh, in the Bible uh, or in, on the internet, you will find hundreds and hundreds of different theologians from the first century, I mean, way back, um, uh, all the way up to, to modern 20th century, 21st century, those different types of things. Just kind of look at, at, at when you're looking at a text, try to find uh, um, something that some of the theologians have written on that particular subject. And the reason I, 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 I bring this up is because, uh, of course, these men and women have studied and they have dug into the scriptures and they've done their homework. They've done lots of digging and all of that information is sitting right there for you to use. Um, different uh, theologians, Charles Spurgeon, who was a great preacher, um, Karl Barth, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who, who died in, um, in Germany uh, under Hitler and, but, but, awesome preacher and awesome theologian, different ones. Um, and every now and then, um, people like Samuel D. Whit Proctor to, to add a little bit color to the scheme, um, who was the president of the um, Virginia Union Theological Seminary. Um, and Dr. James Forbes, who at one, one time many years ago, I paid $50 just to hear him lecture. And I want you to know, I walked out of there with my head swimming, with my head, oh my goodness, it was awesome. Um, and every now and then, uh, even today, when I just feel like I need to get my theological on or my, um, get a, get a, just a, uh, just hear something that I don't normally hear, I'll, I'll pull up Gardner C. Taylor. He's passed on and going on to glory now, but that man of God, Lord have mercy, uh, may not be for everybody, but I can sit there and listen to him preach a sermon or do a lecture, and I am just in another world. But anyway, but these are these are tools that you can use that will help you um, get into the Word of God and help you understand the scriptures that are there. Your homework assignment. Let's talk about your homework assignment just a moment. Uh, how many of you, if by show of hands, how many of you have already finished your homework assignment? I've seen, I've, I've seen some of you. All right, but all right, some of you have already turned in your homework assignment. Your homework assignment is due now. I, I believe it was. I've got to go back and see what I said, but it's next week. Um, either let's make it, um, let's make it um, Monday night at 11.59. This coming Monday at 11.59, your assignment is due. And it's so such a simple assignment. All you have to do is look at 1 Samuel chapter 14, verses 1 through 23, and write down, make a list of all the words that you don't automatically understand, or you would like to have more clarity on. And we're going. We're going to. We're going to use this list as we continue to go through. Amen. So thank you, for those of you who have already turned in your assignment. Thank you so much for turning it in. And uh, we we're we're going to begin to look at those different things. Do you have any questions um, on this evening? Any questions at all? Any questions on what we've talked about? Now, before I open the floor for questions. I do know that on the email when I sent you your assignment, I, uh, the title said uh, your first assignment and notes, but I wanted to finish these, this, uh, these notes on some of the tools uh, of word study. I wanted to finish that before I sent you these notes so that you can just have it uh, for your very own. Um, and, and so I'll, I'll be sending that probably this week so that you can continue to look at that and, and understand some of the tools that are right there at your fingertips for many of you that you can use to unearth the truths of God's word. Amen. Now, I'm going to send you that. Um, 
let me ask this question. Um, no, before I ask that question, let me open it up. Is there, uh, do you have any questions that you might have concerning word study or anything that we have talked about so far? Dr. Stanley? Yes. You might wanna, um, you might wanna stop recording since we're doing questions, Q and A. Thank you so much. See, you're um, a real student right there. That's, 